Good morning, ESM. My name is Karen Jacobs, and today I'm going to be interviewing Abigail Harrington about her capstone project. But first, let's see what's going on with news. A Syracuse mortician goes viral on TikTok with her videos about life with dead people. Eileen Hollis, funeral director and Baller at Hollis Funeral Home on West Genesee Street, has worked with her father, who has owned the home for four decades. Hollis gained half a million followers on TikTok after answering questions in her videos like, do you have to be buried in a casket and are piercings removed? Hollis thinks no question is too crazy, and her main goal is to help people feel more comfortable in life without death. I'm just a normal person helping people, Hollis said. It's not that depressing. It's nice to help people in one of their hardest times in life. I don't think that the profession is any sadder than being a doctor, a nurse, a lawyer, a social worker, and all these people are hitting some really soft shakes with. And because I'll say, these TikToks are to die for. On Wednesday, Dr. David Nutman, a member of the Food and Drug Administration's advisory committee, resigned in a protest after the FDA approved a new Alzheimer's drug called Adelum, despite objections from its advisory per peripheral and central nervous system drug advisory committee. Dr. Nutman said, I resigned from the PCNS committee because if I were to ever ask to serve on a future panel, I wouldn't want to be treated in such a disrespectful way that the external advisors were treated. The advisor said that there wasn't enough evidence to support that the drug worked at all, but the drug's maker, Bludgeon, reanalyzed re the data and said that there could be an indication that it may help some patients. The drug will cost approximately $56,000 per year, and Bludgeon's CEO promised not to hike the prices for at least four years. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The CNY High School Film Fest was held Friday, June 4th. ESM students represented the schools very well, placing in many categories. In the news category, Todd Durantini's COVID and Education earned second place. In the PSA commercial, Nalene LaMarche earned third place, while Samicha Kadara won first place with her video for the Mozo Corporation. Chris Davis placed third in the music video category while Julia Larada earned two awards, a second place in music video and third place for best comedy. Last but not least, Kyra Johnson won first place for best animation. The festival looks forward to more ESM submissions next year. So, uh, Abigail, for someone who doesn't know anything uh, about your capstone project, can, uh, can you tell me what it's about? Yeah, of course. So, um, in the courtyard outside of the library, um, uh, my project was creating an outdoor classroom. So this was able to happen with a bunch of volunteers that helped uh, with the landscaping, the mulching, the weeding. And so this space will uh, be able for students' use, um, whether like study halls or lunches, uh, to go out to do their work or, you know, just to get a break from being inside all day. Um, and then, you know, uh, teachers will also be able to bring their classes out there. Um, so I think it'll be a really great environment for students to be in. Well, I was out there recently and I saw some uh, bird, bird houses and feeders as well as a little garden area. You, uh, can you tell me about that? Yeah, so uh, we added those things um, to make it more of like an outdoor kind of environment. And what's really nice is it ties into the science curriculum really well. Um, so for the global environment class, which I know that you're in and your project is on ornithology, um, so that they're able to use those bird houses and bird feeders to study birds. Um, and then in the environmental science class, they can use the um, organic garden for their locavore project. Um, so it's a really nice environment for students to learn. That sounds re really great. And uh, just uh, back on top of your capstone project, what do you uh, and what do you hope for it to do in the future? Yeah, so I really hope that students will use this as a resource. You know, the, uh, the reason that it was born was from COVID last spring. Um, for me, the strategy that I found most effective of managing my mental health 
was just going outside and getting some fresh air. And so that's what I wanted to bring to ESM this year, and that's why I created the Outdoor Classroom. And so I really want students to use this as a tool for them um, to you know, go do their work outside instead of being inside all day. Um, and I really hope it benefits them. The boys track team plays in sectionals today at home starting at 4.30. The girls track team came up just short of sectionals title after losing by half a point to Central Square. Avani McDuffie got first in the 100 dash, a coach, K I'm sorry, Kiwani won the 100 hurdles and Ariana Finkelstein got first in shot put. The boys varsity lacrosse team defeated Watertown 9-7 in the first round of sectionals. Trey Jones on the team with five goals and one assist, Jackson Paula got two goals in a and an assist, and Nolan Palmer and Gavin Hutaling each scored one goal. The boys play at FM tomorrow in the, in the finals of the Class B sectional championship at noon. The Milwaukee Bucks took game three as they beat the Brooklyn Nets 86 to 83. Chris Middleton led the Bucks with 35 points and Kev Kevin Durant had 30 points for the Nets. The Nets now have a series lead of two games to one the Utah Jazz beat the Los Angeles Clippers 117 to 111 to take the 2-0 lead in the series. Donovan Mitchell had 37 points in the win for the Jazz. I'm Isabel with your sports. So that is all the time we have for today. So for me and everyone here at the morning show, have a great day.